we're gonna tell you a tip right now in order to get rid of ghosts. Try using a remote control. And turn it off. And turn off the ghost. Right. Hi, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Charlie. And welcome to Outsmarting the Shadows, where we help you survive horror movies. That we do. And we're missing Milo today. He's not here. Yeah. He's a stink boy. Yeah, we have to give him a bath. <laughs> yeah, he went outside all day and he played with the goats mm -hmm. and he played with the other dogs and he came back in and he was all stanky. Yeah. So. Not today. Not today. <laughs> but today is a throwback. Yes, it is. Oh, and what a throwback it is. So you found this movie. Why did you pick this? I don't know. I was just looking through movies and that movie came out, came out and I distinctly remember the the poster from when I was a kid. Mm. I don't remember any I think I watched it but I remember nothing of the movie. So I said, "Hey, why don't we watch this?" And let me tell you, the 80s were wild. The 80s were wild. We have a lot to cover today. Yeah. So, this movie is House from 1986. Mm. And before we go into spoilers, I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the production stuff. Okay. So this movie had, it was it was directed by Steve Miner. Okay. And it had a $3 million budget. Really? That feels like a lot for this yes. movie. It was like somebody threw away a lot of money. Guess how much it made. How much did it make, this yes. movie? I don't know, $100,000? <laughs> you think it bombed? Yes. <laughs> I think it bombed. I, <laughs> watching it now, this movie is kind of trash. Well, remember, in the 80s it wasn't. It was amazing. In the 80s, this movie was amazing? One would assume. Well, well, uh, well, the, well <laughs> let's see. How much did it make? It earned $22.1 million. Jesus. Was there a house, too? I have no idea. Well, we'll now we're going to find out. out. To find out, yeah. So... This movie had a very 80s plot. It had 80s hair. It had 80s cars. It had 80s depiction of women. Oh, my gosh. The <laughs> misogyny in this is real. It, it had 80s over-the-top cartoonish people in it. Right? It was so incredible. And right from the get-go, you know it's from the 80s. Not from the scenes, not from the setting, but just from how it is shot. Yes. So, our favorite part, mm -hmm. spoiler warning. Yes, spoiler warning. I mean, if you haven't seen this movie, it came out in 1986. Yeah, I 85, mean... 85, 86? I would say it came out in 1986. I would say that this movie, you don't necessarily have to watch it to enjoy our podcast today. Yes. Um, now, if you enjoy old, like, the practical effects, yeah. if, you, if you like... You know, just slapstick, slapstick, because our comedy, <laughs> one of the big tests that you said when we were starting this movie was, you know, I get very startled at yes. horror movies to a certain extent. It's, it's weird that I have I'm I actually started this horror podcast because mm -hmm. I am not the traditional like I love gore. I love horror, but I like to survive gore and horror. Mm -hmm. I like that aspect of it. So. Your take on this movie was, let's see if this movie startles you the same way a modern one would. Yeah, let's see if you can, you, you, you get afraid the same way. Yes. I mean, I think this movie had just two scenes where you screamed. <laughs> just two. <laughs> and it wasn't even, it was like cheap. It wasn't fair scene. One of them was, you know, I think. Yeah, both of them were. All right, all right. They weren't cheap. I mean, they were jump scares, but they weren't cheap. That's they true. They were just... Oh, a little bird flying into the sea, you know, dog barking. That's true. Or, you know, a snake jumping out of the bushes or something for like no that. For no reason. For no, yeah, for random reason. Exorcist believer. <laughs> right. We're watching you. We did watch you. Yes. <laughs> We're disappointed. <laughs> that was okay. All right. So, spoiler warning. If you haven't seen this, you can go ahead and see it. If you would like to just enjoy the podcast, we're happy to describe to you some stuff that happens, what makes it great, what makes it terrible, mm -hmm. and a slapstick along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go right in. Let's go right in. This movie is about a character named Roger Cobb. Mm -hmm. Roger Cobb is a traditional 1980s, 30-something-year-old guy with a perm. <laughs> with a perm? 
<laughs> who's a writer? Who's a writer? Who's a horror writer? I that actually got me. I love horror movies about writers. Uh -huh. I find them to be really cool, and they usually accentuate the story. And being a writer myself, I think that's really great. Mm -hmm. So I went into it hoping that there would be some writing. There was no writing. No. No, well, Not at all. He did sit down, but his writing was in the form of flashbacks. His writing was in the form of him watching a movie on television while he pretended to write. Yeah, but you know, the flashbacks I... of his days in Vietnam. And it wasn't, he wasn't writing a horror book. No. He was writing a Vietnam memoir or something like that when he was in Vietnam. It was so weird. But so... he remembers it like being in a fake jungle. So let's set the stage for everybody who, because nobody has watched this movie. <laughs> right. So Roger Cobb. He had this wife, Cindy, uh -huh. who is also who is a movie star. And he and Cindy had this really cute little boy. I think his name is Jimmy. I don't remember. Plastic it's, Jimmy. Yeah, little Jimmy. <laughs> and then he has an aunt, a very elderly woman who lives in a Victorian mansion in California. Of all the actors in this movie, the aunt and then the neighbor, which I haven't gotten to yet. His those, name is Harold. Harold. Those are the only two actors that I distinctly remember seeing in other films. Harold is a, a constant permutation in this movie. Let me get his name. So Harold is played by George Went. Okay. And yes. it's not a name that I would typically just spew off the top of my head, but I have seen him, and so have you. Yes. Just those are up. another one of those actors where you know you've seen him in everything. Right. But you can't quite you can't place him. In what? The thing is, when you watch movies from the 80s, especially in there, because this is kind of in his semi-early career, I mm -hmm. think, you know you've seen him, but you've probably seen him in a movie that you've seen, you saw him in as a kid. Yes. So, like, you wouldn't necessarily be able to even remember that you saw that movie. Yeah, yeah. You can just... Remember his face. Hey, right, you remember his face. I've seen this guy before. Right? Yeah, I've seen some movie with him in it. So I remembered him, and I remembered that I liked him. Mm. So whatever he yeah. was in left a good impression on me. Yeah, probably comedies. Yeah. I think he was in a lot of comedies. He was in a lot of comedies. So anyway, so George Cobb, mm -hmm. he had this wife, he had this son, he had this aunt living in this cool house. Apparently, they went there all the time. Yeah. Because what happens is they go to their aunt's house, mm -hmm. and... Their son is playing in the yard. He's doing some yard work. But, which is the most random thing. He's right there. He's right there. His he's, son. He's in a... So he is in a, in a ladder, if I remember. I don't know, trimming he's not even on a ladder. He's just trimming, trimming bushes. bushes. And his son is right there. All you have to do is... Okay, he's there. Okay, and all of a sudden... Oh, he's not there? He's gone. That made no sense whatsoever. So the rules are a bit sketchy for, for the supernatural in this film. But as they are, they seem to be for all things. That's very frustrating to me. Yeah. So we can piece together the rules. But anyway, the sun is gone. Yeah. And a weird thing, a yeah. weird scene in this movie is, so when his son is gone, he runs to the front looking for the sun. Right. And all of a sudden, there's a car that just darts away. Hey, they never revisit that. Never for no reason. And, you know, he's, his, the wheels spin and you can hear it's like and so they let you think oh he was stolen right he was kidnapped but he doesn't look for the car he, he doesn't acknowledge the car it's like it never happened he doesn't respond to the situation as though his son has been kidnapped he doesn't respond to any situation like anybody that <laughs> any normal human being who's living on planet earth would <laughs> respond it's true throughout the movie uh this gentleman mr cobb is an idiot right <laughs> Man, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. So he asks his wife, Cindy, "Have you seen? Are, is Jimmy with you?" And she's like, right. "Oh, he was with he you, was obviously." With you. <laughs> and then he runs. He back. runs to the pool, well, and he, he runs back. Yes. And then his kid is in the pool. His kid is in the pool. Um, like drowning, like he can't. Swim. Like he can't swim, and he immediately dives into the pool. That was a really cool scene. And the child is totally gone. He disappears. He disappears. He's not in the pool no more. Yeah. Which makes no sense. Well, it'll make sense later. That's the thing that'll make sense later. Okay. So then we fast forward to a couple of years down mm -hmm. the line. He and his wife, Cindy, are estranged. Oh, they're divorced. Yes, they're very divorced. I mean, that's very strange. It's extremely estranged. No more strange than that. <laughs> Is there a divorce or murder? <laughs> well, <laughs> so, I mean, wow. That's, yeah. 
But they're still friends. Yeah, yeah. They're, so so still... it's just divorce. Okay. <laughs> Less than murder, yeah, more, and, than, more than and estrangement. Ho in horror movies, as it goes, the estrangeness is divorce, murder. That's murder, true. divorce. There's no in between. No in between. There's no, ah, I'm not talking to that bitch. No, it's like I killed her, and you know, and now she's haunting me. And remember, we got to revisit this conversation later. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, so anyway, so uh, this guy has Roger Cobb. He's a he's a writer, and and they depict him at a a book signing, mm -hmm. where all of his fans are horrible, creepy, disgusting human beings. Well, they're they're kind of like over the top. 80s characters, each one of them. Well, it's so strange to me. The evolution of fandom has shifted so significantly that even you and I are making a podcast about something, yeah. and we shower regularly. But the the people depicted in this scenario... Meaning every day. Every day. <laughs> exactly. Just regularly, it's like... Every once in a while, maybe you shower once a week, maybe every two days. Let's just make it clear, you know. Let's that make means it clear. every day. Every day. Yes. Perform personal hygiene operations. Correct. So <laughs> I just had to make that clear. We had to make that clear. Yeah. Yes. So he's at this book signing and they depict fans as like these greasy lechers. <laughs> They want <laughs> so little weird. disgusting but, pieces but, but of him. From every from every aspect, they're like uh, uh, like the 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 American Psycho kind of guy. That's all kind of like you know high pompous and you know yeah, he's wearing they a do. suit. There's like the there's the uh, the punks. There's there's a little bit of everything, but all of them over the top. But even in that, they depict them as like like some some sort of aberrant creatures yeah. form of form of human. And like anyone who really loves something must be wrong because they didn't really they didn't really understand fans. Even, the there's even a Karen before that even term even oh, existed. That's true. There's a lady that's oh that's a Karen right. in the 1980s She's leaning on a stranger in front of her screaming at the author about something. Right. And you're like what? So he wants to get out of there because apparently interacting with your fans is a terrible thing in the right? 80s. That's not what you do. That's not what I mean, you do. I mean, that's not what, I mean, have you seen any writer that likes to interact with their fans? Yes. Ah, you're lying. No. <laughs> None of them do. Stephen, uh, Stephen King. Nah, he, he doesn't like it. J.R.R. Tolkien. Nah, he doesn't like it. The Stephen guy, isn't he dead? Oh, Tolkien? Oh, oh. Isn't that from the, from the Lord of the Rings guy? What did I say? Tolkien. You said J.R.R. Tolkien. Oh, yeah, he's uh, dead. Yeah. Uh, isn't that meaning? You, you're talking about Martin from the from the Game of Thrones guy. Look at that. You don't even know your your writers. Listen, I may not know names of things, okay, yeah. but I know the concept of things. According to this movie, I just don't like to hang out with you know these greasy fans. You don't right. want to do that. So then he you has just a... want their money. Yeah. So he so he then he's he's having a conversation with his agent. Across the street, when audio was not really a thing. Yeah, in the audio in this movie sucks. I'm not sure if it's, you know, how we watched it with uh, our sound bar doesn't work for this, but it sucked. It was, so we got more of the traffic than we did the conversation. Right? As it, what, what are they saying? I usually have to translate for you sometimes, though, yeah. because when there's, when anyone talks softly or has an, any kind of accent, I it's don't very difficult nothing. for you. Yeah. <laughs> so... What he was talking about with his agent was that the agent was like, listen, these old books are great, but you need to start coming up with some new stuff. And he's writing a book about Vietnam. And the problem is his previous story was a horror. It was a horror novel. I thought all his uh, books were horror. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. And, and so the... So the the agent obviously is like, no, no, we don't really want that. That right. sounds awful. We don't want stories about Vietnam. We, we don't want... want stories about your personal history. Right. <laughs> so it's been two years. His son is still gone. He never found him. And then he gets news that his aunt has died. Yes. And uh, he goes to her estate and they're like, oh, you're here. Here's the keys. And the the lawyer takes him on a tour of the home, assuming he wants to sell it. And they discuss all of the different features of the house, which are um, really cool, but also somewhat creepy. Mm. Like, at one point in this tour, this was so wild. <laughs> Wait, really random. The, so they're in the shed? And the guy or, or, He picks, picks up, up a harpoon? A, 
Yeah, is it called a harpoon? I don't know what you do to, you know, kill fishies and stuff. Yes, it is a harpoon that has, like, just a, a giant, what is it? Uh, it's a harpoon gun. Thank you. It's just a harpoon gun. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, and it's not just, complicated. He's talking, and then he shoots it at him, and it just flies by what him and right almost here. whacks him in the face, in the in the eye, and this lawyer guy was like, him. oops, sorry. I would be like... <laughs> Where are we? Like, what the hell? What the fuck, man? What the hell, man? What are you doing? Like, and then he just continues on, like, oh, you know, there's something that happened right? in the 80s. The lawyer's like, oh, oops. You know? In the 80s, you grabbed the harpoon guns and you shot them at people. Right. Just willy-nilly. And if it didn't hit them, okay. But, you know what? I will give the lawyer something. He had a really great idea that a lot of people want to do that I want to do, uh -huh. which is... He's like, you could you could make this into a nice studio space, like something for yourself, like a nice little tiny house, this garage. And then, for the really frugal, you rent out the big house. That's what everybody's you, doing right I now. Was like, I, I mean, this guy got Airbnb before Airbnb. Oh, Airbnb, right? like he got it down. Yeah, yeah. It was really cool. He had it. He had but it. But it was so interesting that he's like, like if you're in financial straits, and I'm like, that's just everyone now. Right, <laughs> right? and then this time, that house probably costs what? <laughs> $50,000. Right? So then he goes into the house. The house is this beautiful old Victorian. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful, it's really beautifully decorated and it's a wonderful set. And I wish that they had had more scenes and that it were more elaborate featuring the home. But mm. I just, I just love it so much. So he says, I'm not going to sell this house. Yeah, I'm going to live in it. I'm going to live in it. And For a while to write my book. To write his book. So pretty quickly we meet Harold, mm. his neighbor. And how we meet Harold is in an extremely sexist, strange scene. Where, right. where suddenly, randomly, there's this lady in, in tights. And you gotta you gotta She's in an eighties uh like spandex. Spandex bodysuit. Bodysuit. Made right. of silver. Silver right. spandex bodysuit. And suit. then she's running, but she's not running normally. She's like for like people, this. for people listening, we're acting out. We're acting how she's out. Running. At, it, just she's, think of T Rex, right? With T Rex arms, your arms, just running back and when forth. When I watched it, I was like, "Who runs like this?" <laughs> I want to know what did the director tell this actress lady? Listen, you do not run like normal people. Right. You run like an idiot. Run like your boobs are carrying you forward. Right. And if and if you don't run, they will they will fall. You it's will so random, and then he just looks at her like salivating. He does. It's not. Oh, and she has an '80s headband on too. Yes, she does. And like salivating, just locks eyes, you know. And he starts looking at her, salivating from when she keeps on running like a kid. Eyes with him. Yeah, and she's like enjoying. Right, it. and then she goes to her house, which is across the street, I guess. Yes, and she's still locking eyes with him, like she wants him. The male gaze at its finest. Right? Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is the time where catcalling was like, yeah, that's what you want. Catcalling was supposedly great. So, anyway, as he's watching this lady, Harold, his neighbor, who's right there. Right? Goes, Watering plants for goes, no reason. Goes like, pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, I'm like, like, yeah, you know, it. you know, you want it. Now there's two of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> And then, in the next moment, not the next scene, the next moment, Harold is in his yard with his dog. No, that's a dog was a different theme. No, it was like right then. No, that was when he had his, you know, his Vietnam suit and he ran outside for some reason, which made no sense. Oh, that's right. It made sense because Harold, because he was actually kind of a good, he was good at survival. Who was good at survival? Roger. Yes, but the scene in itself made no sense. But we'll get to that. We'll scene. get to it. All right. So Harold is kind of odd, his neighbor. But yeah, he's like he he asked him about the house, and he was like, "Oh yeah, that lady that lived here." Which that was a funny part. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's a whacker. She was crazy. She's like, you know, she she was a crazy old codger. And then he goes like, "Oh yeah, that was my that was aunt. my aunt." And he's like, "Oh yeah, she was so nice." Oh, yeah, was yeah do you want some food? food i'm single oh no we gonna... better yet we could have some burgers we can have a have a guy's night with, yeah. the, with the game you watch the game you want to come over and watch the game Harold... doesn't say what sport it just says the game so 
Harold takes a lot of privileges, but he does seem genuinely interested in a friendship. Everybody in this movie takes a lot of privileges. Yes. And this movie looks like in the 1980s where this movie is set, there wasn't any... You know, don't trespass, stay in your ground. If you, you know, go into a house, you might get shot by the owners. None of that was a thing. It's so wild. It was, people were just, you know, people. Nowadays, a lady goes or somebody goes into your driveway in a car and you could get shot. Ugh, yeah. Well, there's no, nothing, (laughs) there's no neighborliness anymore. (laughs) Not it's, like that neighborliness. <laughs> no, I mean, I wouldn't want Harold neighborliness because that was a lot. But something in between what we have now and what, what was back then would be nah, appreciated. Nah. I mean, this movie is... Nah. Remember when people used to show up to your front door with like brownies and stuff? That has never happened in my whole life. So yeah. I cannot remember that because it has never happened. I think that's a fallacy from movies. That's not true. So if a guy comes and opens your door and goes into your bedroom and tw- at 12 midnight with some beers and food, oh yeah, I just wanted to come by to offer you a midnight snack from Chinese food. Okay. It's like, what? So that was a thing? Listen, that wasn't a thing. That was in the that movie. That was never a that thing. That was not in real life. That was in the movie. And that was wild. I was like, talk about a horror movie. <laughs> right. Of We could just call this The Stranger. Named right. Harold. He was just in his, in the second floor, right? Right. Roger is on the second floor looking for some creature that has come out of a closet. Talking about, we, we completely skipped the first uh, part that you got scared, which is how his aunt died. So Roger has met Harold. He goes back into the house. He's just looking around. And the scene cuts. It's sort of a pan over that I think is done quite well, where the aunt's hanging body appears. Yes, because the aunt hung herself, and we never talked about the delivery boy. Oh, my God. (laughs) So before any of this happens, the actual first scene of the house, uh, or of the entire movie, was when this kid who looked like he was probably 30 years old but he's playing a, a child. Yeah, he's playing a 12-year-old. He's playing a 12-year-old. And he's 37. <laughs> right. He brings groceries, clearly to this old lady. You know, she's hired a service to bring her some groceries. Instead of him putting it on the center table like he probably is hired to do. And leave. And leave. He puts it on the center table. He calls out to this lady. She doesn't answer. So what does he do? He just starts. He investigates. Investigating uh, through and the house for some reason. The thing is, what is... The rule, you, first of all, don't break in it, break it in. <laughs> right. And that, today, is that a rule that we do, have to you, even tell? If you people? do that today, you'll probably get shot. Right. If you're in a stand your ground state. It's, yeah. So you're not supposed to do that, but he decides to very, very slowly walk around the walk house. Walk up and snoop. the house he was and snooping. snooping around. And, and now he is saying, like, oh, like oh he's it's, calling and then her. he's like, it's me, the delivery, the delivery boy. boy. And I'm like, you don't have a name. They, she doesn't. If you've done this before, you know her name. She should know your name. Right? It's me, yeah. Eric. You right? No, it's, it's me, me, Jasper. The delivery boy. No. So, the delivery boy discovers her dangling dead body. Right. And in this part, you screamed. I did. Because it was it was shot pretty nice. Or he opens the he opens the door and he sees her swinging. And you know what's really disappointing? Mm. I knew that. I mean, the description that we had of the movie was a lot more extensive than probably the description from the 80s. Mm-hmm. I knew exactly that they were going to see a hanging dead old lady. Right. I knew it. But at this point, the delivery boy, because he had no name, he does the right thing. He leaves. He just runs away. He runs away. And we never see we him never again. We never see He lived. He, he survived. He survived the movie. Yes, he did. Yes. So... Back to Mr. Cobb and yes. his newly inherited home, which is gorgeous. He's got a great pool. With it's his really weird nice. neighbors. His weird neighbor. So he decides to kind of hunker down, set up shop, and start to write. Yes. He is going upstairs. It's really late. He opens a door. There's no furniture in this room, which is a blessing later on. And there's nothing. It's just right. an empty closet. But for some reason... The clock gets to 12, right? And he decides... I'm going to open it again. I need to open this but door again. But they don't know why. No, 
one knows why. He, so this he didn't hear anything. This was a movie before the time of like a sidekick that would that would give the character an opportunity to talk about his inner feelings. Mm. I think they just assumed that no one cares what they're feeling. They're just going to do what they're going to do. Okay. Because we no, we don't know why this guy does anything that he right? does. Is this before or after he turned off the ghost of his son? Oh my God. <laughs> So I have a new survival tip from this movie. Right. No, but let, let's walk to how, how it happens and why this survival tip is in place. All right. He so was writing. I, I have to tell you, if you're not watching this and you're listening to this, I am both disappointed and impressed at the same time at what happens next. Yes. So he's writing. He's right. at his desk. He's writing things. And he has the TV on while he's writing. Yes. And when he's writing, by the way, again, what Charlie is saying they're all flashbacks of right. his time in Vietnam. Crappy flashbacks. They're terrible flashbacks. Um, and it's not really well done, but it is there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it exists. <laughs> so he's he looks up and the TV is turned on. Right, right. And he looks over to the left. And he, tur he turns off the TV. He turns off the TV using a remote. A remote control, yes. And then he looks to the left out a window, and the image of his son... Who disappeared, who what, three years ago? Years ago. Two years ago? Appears. Little Jimmy. Right? It's like calling, oh, daddy, or something like yes. that. It, it, it kind of like ghostly, a little transparent. Yes. And he picks up the remote, and he turns it and off. And he clicks. And it works. And it works. It turned off the apparition of his child. And he doesn't get he freaked doesn't out. Get, he doesn't He's react. like, this is normal. He's like, you know what? I'm a little bit tired. I think I should go check the closet. That's literally how the scene commenced. Right. After he turned off the apparition with a controller of his son. So I have to admit, I've been watching horror movies for a long time. And I have never, ever seen a character... Get rid of a ghost by turning with it off. A remote control. By turning it off. But you know what? I've never seen mm -hmm. someone try it. There you go. They tried it. The around. only time I've ever seen it, it worked. Right. So a tip. that leaves us to. to all right. We're going to tell you a tip right now in order to get rid of ghosts. Try using a remote control and turn it off. And turn off the ghost. Right. You have probably a remote control, a Roku remote, you know, right? a smart TV remote. You probably just have one just lying point around. Point the apparition. Point it. And press power. And press power and yeah. see if it turns off. Right? Doesn't hurt to try. It doesn't hurt to try. And clearly, the 1986 version of House tells you that it could work. That it's possible. It's possible. It's going in the rules. Yes, it is. It's going in the rules. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it's going to be one of the, uh, of the golden rules. One of the golden rules. Seven minute rule. Always get upset. Turn it off with a remote. Yes. See yeah. if you can turn off whatever it is with a remote. Yeah. It, you don't know. It could be stray electrical signals or something exactly. from something. Some new new age technology that we're not aware of. From the 60s. From the <laughs> from 60s. The, from the 80s, I mean. Yeah. So I was very impressed with that. New rule created. He goes upstairs. He opens his closet twice. The yeah. second time around is the best disgusting... Creature, practical, practical animatronic, animatronic creature. creature we've seen yeah. in a long time. Yeah, at this point, they're like, listen, you know those creatures that they make in uh, um, Jim Henson? Jim Henson production? We need one of those. Yeah. Not as fancy, but one of those indeed. We need one of those. We just need to cover it in Vaseline. Right, cover it in Vaseline and move it front and back. Right, just just, just move it just forward to the back. front and back. It'll be scary. Don't worry, the camera will take care of the rest. <laughs> yes, you just shake the camera around. <laughs> Then put a put a stunt or a, just a crew member in a giant hand and just right, have him, just, just have him claw. Him. Yeah. <laughs> so it has this really strange, eerie creature that comes out of the closet. It's a little bit bulky. It's a little bit big, but it's got some big dang claws, and it claws the heck out of this guy. Yeah, yeah. So what does he do? He's very calm. Right. He's extremely calm. He and closes the door. He closes the door calmly. He doesn't freak out. Doesn't run away. Stays right. in the same house. I'm guessing he slept there too. We we don't really know. Like it when they cut to the next day or a few days. I don't know how long deliveries take. It doesn't does it really doesn't say. It doesn't say. I was very upset because I was like, "What happened the rest of the night? What did you do?" Nobody knows. And the These next things scene, we want to know. The next scene, he has 
Not some of the cameras. He has all the cameras. Well, the next scene is the delivery people delivering all of the equipment. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Amazon wasn't a thing in 1986. No, no. Not probably, to the extent it was now. He probably ordered it at, a, at Radio Shack. Or he probably didn't order it. He probably got in his car, went to Radio Shack, bought everything, and then had it delivered. Oh, that's what you did in the 80s. That's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, there was no internet. So you either had to call or you had to go there. Buy it and then no, no yeah deliver it to my house it's and true. then it would get delivered. It's true. So that was an interesting thing. He gets all of this camera equipment and this is actually what I would recommend. Mm. You know, if you can't leave the house or you choose not to, I mean, this is the first supernatural event he's really seen. So in my mind, if I was him, I would after think, turning off his child's ghost without control. Yeah. But I'm guessing he thought that was in his head, maybe? We don't know anything about what this guy is thinking. No. So I just think that it was a smart... If you're not willing to leave, because mm -hmm. maybe you think it's connected to your son, I assume that this would be the best course of action. To yeah. get documentation of it, try and understand it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So he sets up all these cameras and all this stuff, and he doesn't capture anything. Yeah, he doesn't capture anything. And isn't this when his neighbor comes in? Yes. Right? So Harold, his neighbor. Oh, yeah, because he doesn't capture anything. He opens the door, nothing's there, and then he closes it. He's downstairs, and then he, he hears the clock again because it strikes midnight. So he runs, runs back upstairs. up. And... Wait, we have to note. Uh -huh. He's wearing commando oh. uniform gear, like he's, army he's, green. He's wearing the cheapest. He, he, went, he went to Party City. And he asked the fine people at whatever, you know, costume store there Good were in, in 1986. Yeah. He, said, he said, listen, I want the attire of a Vietnam veteran. That's what I want. I want to feel like I'm in Vietnam. Yep. And that's what he had on. He had goggles. He had a hat. Everything yep. was green. He was extremely bright. Commandoed green. out. Right? He, he had everything. And then he opens the door at midnight and the creature returns. Yes. And while he was... For some reason, I'm, I think a little bit before this, when he was setting up, he starts running for no reason, and then do he does flips, he jumps down the stairs, and then he runs out of the house, and... Harold is there. Harold is there, but then he, he kind of like kneels and puts his arms up. I was like, what is happening? I didn't understand what was happening in this, in this scene. Why was he running? Why did he have to jump through the stairs? Was he, was he practicing? I have no idea. It wasn't explained. And that there, that there's where Harold is right there in, in his, his yard, yard with his dog. Right in this guy's yard, not Harold's yard. Yeah. Harold is standing in his neighbor's yard with his dog. And he wasn't looking at the dog. He wasn't walking the dog. He, he was, was looking at the just house, standing like this with his dog standing in the same position, looking at the house, straight up and down, like he was waiting. Waiting, made no sense. No, no. sense at all. The eighties were wild. Eighties were wild. And Harold just launches into a conversation about how they should kind of hang out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And he does. He kind of comes into this house. Oh, but not then. Then he was like, you know, solitude. <laughs> so the writer guy is like, listen, I got to have solitude because I'm writing. Right. And then Harold pulls out his copy of Mr. Cobb's book. From... From Listen, his pocket. Is that a thing that people did in the 80s? Yes. Because I don't know a lot of people that just have a book, their favorite book, old copy of their favorite book where pages are hanging, you know, are just, just now falling. Just, it's just loose leaves. Yeah, loose leaves in their back pocket just walking around. Well, I have like, to admit that that's what I did all my entire but, childhood. I just want to know. So you wake up, oh yeah, let me grab my book and put it in my back pocket. Yes. Nah, you're lying. I'm not lying. I don't believe that. Withering Heights. It listen, listen. If book. this is something that you do, I need to know. There, okay. Everyone who has ever had your favorite book, probably older millennials, mm -hmm. okay? Back when you were a kid, when you were a teenager, I bet you carried that book with you everywhere. I didn't carry nothing. Well. Probably a knife. <laughs> well, sweetie, you were cool. Okay? When you were younger, I was you not were cool. very cool. I was not cool. All right? I was a, a big old nerd. I was a fat little turd. You were not. I was not cool. You were not. You were a drummer. You played <laughs> yeah, video games. I was like when I was 16. 
that's what when I was 16, I carried books in my pocket. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm pretty sure there's somebody else out there that carried books in their back pocket with all the the the, paper the pages just yeah. falling off of their favorite author in case they met him, you know, when they moved in next door. Well, that's what people did. I mean, that wasn't in case. It was just so that you could, you know, re you could have the passages close to you. Okay. <laughs> okay, sure. Anyway, so <laughs> he pulls out this loose leaf book and he asks him to sign it and all the pages just go fluttering to the ground. Hey, he doesn't sign it. He doesn't sign it. He says, I don't have time for this. Right. I've got to go right. Because I, I need solitude. I need solitude. That's his excuse. Right. So Harold is clearly a fan. Right. So after this, at one point, it's midnight and he's in the room. And all of a sudden, Harold opens the door to the room. Just shows up to his upstairs room. Right. With a six pack of beers and Chinese food. Now, wait a minute. We are fast forwarding through a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because well, well before this, right? So Harold and him have had one or two interactions. Harold did come over at one point at night and hung out downstairs for a few minutes. And then... He steals his, his phone, book. phone book, literally a little book with all of his phone numbers in it. Yeah. Because he starts talking about his dead son and that he's seen apparitions and all this. So and Harold the, is, his, is worried about it. Wasn't crazy. His aunt wasn't crazy. The house is haunted. Yes. So he steals it and he calls Cobb's ex-wife. For some Cindy. reason. And... He tells her he's not right. You got to come over. And she's like, well, I can't because I'm shooting a movie and I'm busy. Right. But I'll be there as soon as I can. Yes. So the next day. Which also makes no sense. Which else? Well. You're going to go into people's house and just steal phone books? I, the 80s, I'm assuming. Like you yeah. didn't know who they knew. You didn't know how right. to contact people. Who Marianne, did you, you just received calls and you didn't know who it was. Right. You're just, you just, just ringing. The phone. And you don't know who it is. You don't remember any of this. I remember, I remember having long lines, yes, and not knowing. It's, it's wild. Now yeah, I think I mean, about it, it's so far away that it makes no sense. It's so far away from where we are now that, like, there was this whole scene where he had to steal his contacts to get people that cared about him, rifle through everything right? to go, oh, this is Cindy. Also, is that the right Cindy? Here's the other thing. Cobb has to document in writing, okay, Cindy, wife. Cross that out. Right. Not my X, wife anymore. X. Ex-wife. Right. All right. That's the one it is that's, right now. Right. <laughs> like, it's, and keep it all documented. Yeah. And phone numbers didn't have area codes. Yeah. Well, if they live in your area code, it doesn't matter. Really? Is that the, still the same now? No. I'm very upset about this. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't even know. I know that I, every phone that I know has an area code. I mean, they have them, but they used to be optional. I don't know. I think you're lying. You know I'm not lying. You're on my side. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, so he calls her up and, and you know what he said. I already told you. Then the next day, mm -hmm. he decides he needs to get some weapons involved in this situation. Yes. And he gets the gun and then... A random gun from the shed that his shed. aunt had. I was pretty concerned about this right from the get-go. Yeah. I was like, this is not... You don't know the state of it. It but, hasn't been cleaned. But what the weird thing is, he gets the gun, but he doesn't use it, and then he gets the shotgun, and we never see the gun again. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, so we're going to move past it. doesn't make yeah, sense. It doesn't make sense. But A lot in this movie doesn't make a sense. A lot of it doesn't make sense. The 80s. Yeah, 80s so, look wild. He is... <laughs> He thinks that the creature is there. I don't really remember exactly what happens. I know that the trowel and the shovel and the knife and stuff are chasing him. For some reason, yeah. It's there and then... Tools are chasing tools him. Tools get, you know, like, come to life. Yeah. And they start like chasing spades. him. And, and the, I know that the hatchet goes, you know, you can clearly see it's on a string. Yeah. You know, it dangles like it's on a string. And supposedly it goes really fast, but it's super slow and he gets out of the way. And it gets just gets embedded into into a door. I don't know why she had some of that. Some of that equipment was like um, for farming. Yeah, but she you know, just it lives in this little house. It yeah, she doesn't have any land or anything. Oh, but it had that little that little patch of grass next to the pool. 
That's true. You could grow some wheat on there. Mm -hmm. You might mm -hmm. need to to harvest it with yeah. that tool. Anyway. And, and then she has it. So so the tools are after him. He closed the door and all the tools, they get embedded into the door. And he's like, door. ha ha, tools didn't get me. Uh, survival tips. Mm. Okay. Number one, so far, Harold is a little bit creepy. All right. Yeah. I would lock my doors. Right. All right. I don't care if it's the 80s, lock your doors. Another, another movie that people don't lock no, their doors. Course. Tip number two, mm -hmm. if you feel that there's a haunting going on and you have remote controlled turned off your son, of the spirit of your son, mm -hmm. keep that remote control with you. Yeah, it's important. It's clearly going to work again, something. Right. Okay. Option number three, do everything he did about the camera equipment and the gun. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, he was super smart. Super, super smart. I remember why he ran down the stairs and why? did that weird jumpy thing. So he was testing out. Somehow he put it, he put a rope on the end of the door. Oh yeah, and he opened it. You can't actually open a turn knob with a rope if it's closed. You got to open. You got to turn the knob. Yeah, but not okay. in that but house. Not in this. Not movie. in the eighties. Not in the eighties. <laughs> Knobs work different yeah. then. Knobs were worked Knobs differently back different then. Back yeah. then, it was a little piece of string you just pull hard enough, and that door will open. Yeah. So anyway, so he opened the door expecting the monster. He didn't know it wasn't there, so he just ran. Okay. That was why he did the thing. I see. Anyway, so. He is really investigating. Um, survival tip is going to explain the next part, which is you should really keep your head. Give yourself a little bit of a breather, you know, drink some tea, mm. kind of have some downtime. Of, tea is gross. Don't drink tea. Well, I like it. Okay. Okay. You can... The listener probably doesn't like it either. Unless they're from, you know, Engl England. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people enjoy tea. Um, tea is gross. <laughs> you can you can say what um, what Ted Lasso says that it's, it's just swill dirt water. Yeah, it is dirt water. Don't drink it. <laughs> if you love yourself, don't drink tea. <laughs> anyway, well, moving on. Your beverage of your choice. Anyway, you just need to calm down because what happens next is his wife shows up at his door, right? worried about him. Yeah, she is wearing, by the way, an evening gown. In the eighties, that was just normal wear. I yeah, guess that's what ladies wore. That's what they wore. Yeah. Constantly doed up, constantly sexy. Yes. Yes. So she knocks on the door. She gets his attention. She's like, oh, I was worried about you. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, come on in. She comes in and she immediately. Well, something falls. And then when she comes up. Oh, right. She goes down to reach something up from underneath the table. When she comes up, she is turned into this mega weird monster that's yeah. covered in Vaseline. Like a monster that is, you know, super fat. You, you know, the diabetes got him because their feet are all swollen. And yes. his nasty face is just wild. It is an intense, grotesque For no reason. monster. And, of course, he's got a shotgun with him. So Who he wouldn't? just shoots it in the chest. shoots it in the chest. Like anybody would do. He would. And then it immediately turns back into his wife. Right? Now, right there in the front, just bleeding out. Just bleeding out in his front yard. Now, Harold hears the shotgun but doesn't see cindy fall yeah he sees nothing so he calls the police for no reason well he did hear a shotgun so you know how many shots we hear here and we don't call police listen it yeah, ain't my it, our neighbors have like a like a shooting range in their yard i hear a shotgun or a, a gun go off it is not in my property it ain't my business i ain't call it i am no narc <laughs> here's a, here's a tip number i don't know what to our audience <laughs> Don't be a narc. Is it that uh, snitches get stitches? Yeah, snitches get stitches. But in this, <laughs> in this case, don't be a narc. You hear a gunshot, you know where you live. It's not in your property. It's not in your house. It's none of your business. Don't be all calling the police. Unless you see someone getting shot in front of you, you know, and someone you like. If it's someone you don't like, eh, just let it be. But, you know, if it's someone you like, then, then you call the police. But don't be a narc. That is my tip. Okay. For survival. I am going to counter this a little. Okay. Okay. Because if you live in a closed network community and mm -hmm. you know that this guy has been talking about ghosts and spirits and stuff and you're worried about his mental health for some reason. He wasn't worried about the mental health. He just had nothing to do. I mean, I disagree because he did call somebody to try and to help him at first. Okay. And then the guy shoots a shotgun in his front porch right there. If somebody shot a shotgun where you can see it. Yeah, but he didn't know. What if he was, you know, killing a rat? 
You don't know. Well, discharging a firearm is legal. Yes, it is legal. No, it's illegal. <laughs> well, that's not what you said. In the city limits. <laughs> oh yeah, according yeah, in the 1980s in this yeah, film. So yeah, so it was illegal okay, and he was okay. already worried about him. So I would say that calling the police if you feel that something is not going right is a good idea. No, I would be extremely upset. He was being a narc. Extremely upset. Well, I would say in horror movie situations, typically the police help. Okay. In horror movie situations, typically the police help. So he calls the police. The 80s police were both useless and also <laughs> n not violent. So <laughs> right. you're. So I was pretty happy First with it. First of all, he, he hit the body because he picked up the he body when he... His oh, and he body. caught him and they were there in two seconds. Yes. They were down the street. And they, they had nothing to waiting. do. They were right? yeah. They were down the street and had nothing Several to do. Several cars. Right? It was Several cars. Two cars from both directions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it made no sense. So these cops come and they start to question him. And then, <laughs> and then and they're about to leave. Yeah, I don't know. When they're coming in, then the neighbor comes. And the cop goes like, who are you? And he says, oh, I'm the neighbor. Oh, okay, take a hike. <laughs> he, does, he tells Errol to just get lost. <laughs> I'm just get out of here. Vamos. <laughs> That's what he tells him. So then he he starts talking to the police officers, and they're about to leave. Yeah. And then there's like, can I ask you one more thing? And he's like, yeah, of course, because he thinks they, they like his book and stuff. Right. Can they use your bathroom? <laughs> right. He's like, like, God dang it. Okay, okay. And he Another needs, survival tip. Yeah. Don't let police into your house that's true never so if they need to use the bathroom you kindly show them a tree in front of your house but never let police into your house while they're working as police especially if there's supernatural entities in your home right because and you just think that you've just murdered your ex-wife who turned into a monster who like then turned back right like you don't know the situation you know i mean Something could happen to the, yeah. like, if something happens to those police officers in your house by supernatural forces, right. you're going to get blamed for that. Yeah, you're, you're shit out of luck. Yeah. So they come in, they all sit down for coffee, and, like, it's very tense for a few minutes. I didn't really like this scene. I thought it was kind of silly. Yeah, it's kind of, it, it was. They, they sat down, and then they were questioning him because he said that, you know, the gun was discharged because he was cleaning it, but then there was two cartridges on the floor. I don't know. It's the whole a, thing. A weird scene. So he and Harold clearly have accelerated their relationship according to Harold. Right. Yes. <laughs> Cobb just wants to be left alone to figure out what's going on in his house. So let's fast forward to the kind of the action and what happens. Right. The cops leave. Right. The cops leave. And that night, or a few nights later, who knows? The timeline is very mysterious. Doesn't matter. It's almost midnight, and Harold shows up upstairs. Yes. Oh, the, by the way, the body of his ex-wife has disappeared. Right, yeah, it disappeared. We don't know where it is. Harold shows up upstairs in his home, uninvited, unannounced, with beer, and is like, want to hang out? No, because at this point, his wife disappeared. Yeah. And then he went to look for her. And he went upstairs, and this, I think the other part where you got scared, where his his ex-wife, but the, the, monster, the monster version, version. kind of like comes up into frame behind him, and then it, he knocks him out. Yeah, he it's socks a, her, and he like cuts off her head. Yeah, because then he starts he's, he starts chasing, and then he opens the door. She has purple purple. He opens the door of the blood. bathroom. He opens the door to her bathroom, because before... The, the weapons that were floating around. The tools. The tools, they followed him into the house. and They were just waiting in the bathroom. knocked on the door. Yeah. And they were waiting in the bathroom. When he opened the door, the tools came out and, and they chopped killed, up her head. They killed the thing. The, well, they the chopped up her head. They didn't kill her. Oh, yeah. So then he goes to bury this weird body that's like the, of this monster. And he's actually smart. He separates it into many little pieces. Well, here's another weird thing about the 80s. When he goes out with this monster's body in a bag to bury it in his backyard to bury it in his backyard the lady who is the his neighbor I can't run but i'm running lady right there and i look at you oh yeah Her we're gonna Tanya. play yeah so she is in his pool just swimming just swimming in his pool just and like when, that and when he she gets out all sexy and stuff. Her swimsuit is amazing. This lady is a swimsuit model. She yeah. is gorgeous. And 
this wasn't with her 80s hair with her 80s hair and she <laughs> and she says well your aunt used to let me swim here and you're like all right i guess <laughs> that's so random that's so random so then she says oh well can i come over later and he's like i mean i'm busy right now but yeah i guess yeah you can come over later and then she looks at the body which no. is covered in in a in a plastic bag and she's like are you planting a sapling <laughs> right it's like who have you never seen a sapling? Like, well, maybe she thought it was about? a big tree. That, that's what a sapling is. Okay. Well, I don't know. But then <laughs> she tells him, oh, yeah, I know when men want to work and when they want to play. It's, it's so like, weird. What? Who, what woman talks like this? Uh, women in the 80s. I have to talk to my mom. Yeah. And ask her. Did this you ever, a... like, play with the, the verbal eloquence that is... Right. Discussion. Yeah, is this how you caught my father? <laughs> Just talking like this? Listen, I don't want to know all that. <laughs> okay. I mean, we got to do the research <laughs> for the podcast. So, you know, he agrees to see her later, and she does, in fact, show up later on that evening. Yes, stuff happens. He realizes that the body's still alive, so he cuts it into little pieces. He buries it. He buries it, and then a dog picks up the hand and runs away. Yes. So he, sh so Tanya shows up at his door looking all sexy. Right. And then we suddenly see she's brought a little child that's probably five years old with right. her. I think, no, he was three. He, okay, three he was four. really young, three. And this child is her child. And what she really wanted was she was, like, seducing him so that she could get a babysitter of some random stranger. Right? Some rando. Some rando guy. So Cobb doesn't know her. She doesn't know him. But she's like, oh, I have things to do. Can you take him right? for the night? And he doesn't say no. He just takes him. She drops all his stuff. All his toys. Like his blanket, his toys, toys like everything. All of his stuff. And, like, I'm just like, lady, you don't know him. Right? So... The 80s the were 80s wild. were wild. Right? Like, it was ridiculous the amount of things that, like, that. that's the number one thing that blew me away. Yeah. Remember in Amityville Horror when they just hired some rando babysitter? Rando babysitter? Maybe and when that babysitter just... died, there was no more babysitters. No they babysitters. left them alone. And I was just like, maybe that's how it was? I don't know, but that movie was in the 60s. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So... He actually takes a pretty good care of this kid. Yeah, but and then this is the scene where you see the little munchkin crazy monsters, which you never see again, just in this one So scene. the kid almost dies right? because these weird munchkin creatures try to pull him up a, up a chimney. Yeah. No, by the way, this guy, Cobb, he, the way he reacts to all of this, to everything that's happened, is just by going, huh. Right? <laughs> That seemed to be his reaction to yeah. everything. He ran, he got the kid, he wrestled with the monster for the kid. He got it and it was like, huh. Oh, acting this was weird in the 80s right? too. The acting was weird in this movie. Oh, you think? Yes. Yeah, because I feel like there must have been good movies in the yeah. 80s. Back to the Future's from the 80s. Oh yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was weird. So fast forward, she comes and picks up her son. He decides he's going to go back up and, and try and get the monster in the closet. Harold shows up with his beer at midnight, and Cobb, to his credit, assigns Harold a job and says, listen, you're going to take this thing. Harpoon. Harpoon. The harpoon gun again. Yeah. And you're going to aim it here. And he says, there's a big raccoon you got to You got to kill. There's a big raccoon. Are you afraid of raccoons? That scene was actually really cool when he's instructing Harold what to do. I'm like, dang it, Harold, just be useful for once. Right. So he opens the door. It's the monster because it's midnight. Harold is freaking out. Harold is freaking out, but he shoots it. And then the line attached to the harpoon wraps around Cobb's foot and carries him into another the, the, dimension. Yeah, into the darkness dimension that yes. you can go through the, uh, the closet door. Yes. And then he's in Vietnam. Then he's in the set that was Vietnam, mm -hmm. which is basically a bunch of fake and real plants with a bunch of moss underneath it. Right. That's the entire set. In the darkness. Now, the flashbacks that you see in the Vietnam situation involve a character named Ben. Mm -hmm. And Ben was his friend. Ben is like 18 feet tall. Yeah. He's really like seven or eight feet tall. He's a very tall guy. We see him in later movies. You probably would recognize him. The point is, he let Ben die. 
he or didn't let him die. He, he didn't let him kill him. Get captured. Get captured. He instead of killing him because he couldn't. And Ben's very upset about this. Yes. So Cobb goes into this dimension and he finds his son. Well, not yet. Because he got into a door and then he saw the door when he was being shot at and then he came outside. And then, I don't know, stuff happened. I don't really remember this movie. It, it was so jumps wild. around. It's so weird. He's in his bathroom. He hears his kid. He, he breaks the window. And he then... He comes through the bathroom vanity. But And then he des decides, okay, I'm going to go through this. So he gets prepared. He gets the gun. He gets a He gets a the rope. gun and a rope. And he starts to rappel down back into this alternate dimension. And I really appreciated that he was prepared. Yeah. If you do discover an alternate dimension in your home... Right. This guy really does well. Like, yeah. he has ropes constantly. He has supplies. He should have a little bit some more weapons, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But he seems like he's ready. He did ready. A, um, a Stranger Things. He did a Stranger Things. There was an upside down, and he decided to go through. Yeah, he did. He did. He just didn't have any help. But then this scene is so random, too, because he's going down, and then a flying Skeletor creature grabs his gun. Grabs his gun. And then really fast goes like... And shoot, he shoots the rope right above him, and I'm like, "Dang, he's a great shot!" Right? He's a While great flying? shot. It's yeah. So, and we never see that character ever again. Never again. Just that one scene. Yeah. He falls in the water. He comes out. He's in again in Vietnam, and his child is in a crate in the jungle and the upside down of this movie. Yes, he finds his son in a crate, mm -hmm. and he ends up. Uh, trying to take his son back out into the real world. Yeah. They manage it. And this is the part where the swimming pool makes sense mm -hmm. because they end up going into the water, being chased by the skeletor apparition of Ben, his old Vietnam right. colleague. And they go up through the swimming pool. Right. So the swimming pool was a portal, was like the closet door and the vanity window, a portal into. The other dimension, yes. the demon dimension. Yes. Now, unfortunately, like Ben chases them. Right. So Ben swam or went through the door or the vanity. We don't know. Into the house. Right. And then he's chasing them. Yeah, he's chasing them, and they have some pretty good action scenes. Yeah, but... They have some action scenes. You know, it's. Uh, I mean, it's eighties action. Eighties action scene. A lot of slapstick. You know, yeah. This movie is more of comedy horror than a real. It's horror. not really scary. Right. But he does make good decisions. Right. In the end, he grabs one of the grenades mm -hmm. from Ben and he shoves it into this open cavity that's inside Ben's body. Yes. And he explodes. And the whole house burns down, oh, starts God. burning down. Stone. And then the scene, the action movie scene where his his ex-wife gets Has there finally. Arrived. It's night. She gets there in with a uh, in a cab. Taxi cab. Yeah. She opens, and then she sees the house getting turned ablaze, and then the slow motion, the front doors open, and he's carrying he's his carrying son. He's carrying Jimmy. Like, really epic. It's really and epic. And his Vietnam clothes. Yeah. Which makes no sense, because this kid was in this dimension for two years. What did he eat? That's never explained. Yeah. I'm guessing that in this dimension, time... Time is warped. Yeah. His work because when he went in and then when he came out, it was really quick. But his friend was already drunk, like he's been there for a while. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, like he'd been there forever. Yeah. So I think there's something in this movie where time, time was definitely in that dimension, but it's not really explained. Yeah. So right here, she's very happy. She found her kid and fade to black. Yeah. Yeah, he was the hero. He was literally... They started to focus back in on Cobb and on his like expression, which you would think would be like... Yeah, I did it. But no, it was just a regular expression. Yeah, just like he's been through the whole movie. It like, was huh. like, huh. Yeah, it happened. And then they pause the film, and then it fades to black. It fades to black, yeah. And you're like... It is a wild movie. Oh. This movie is wild. I, it is hard for me to believe that this movie was popular. $22.1 million says From that it was. a $3 million budget. Yeah. Now... I feel that this movie has a lot of good horror movie tropes in it, primarily around haunted houses mm. and portals. So 
I think there's a really good book about this called House of Leaves that I would recommend that people check out. Um, I might be able to put an affiliate link down in the description so yeah. that you can take a look at that book. That book is about a house that has other dimensions in it, which makes the inside of the house larger than the outside, which is basically what happened here, mm. only this is more the slapstick version of it. And I think when you're faced with that, the survival that you have to focus on is just getting out of the house mm. because that haunting isn't going to follow you. Yeah. I love that he had a goal of saving his son, even though it wasn't as fleshed out of a story. Yeah. He did everything right to follow that goal. Yeah. And he survived and nobody died in this movie. No one died. Just his, his, his aunt. Yeah. That's the only person that died. It's interesting to note that she died because she said that the house finally got me. Yeah, it tricked her. It tricked her into killing herself. Which is weird. Well, I think that's a really interesting character plot because later on in a lot of horror series and movies we see, the houses and haunted things really do that to people, but they are, they, again, it's not the 80s, so they talk about it a lot more. Mm. And that's usually a major point that like people are going mad. In here, I think they wanted you to think that he was going mad, but they didn't have the acting chops to really do it. Right, right. <laughs> they didn't develop it all that well. So, yeah. did you survive? Yeah, how did you do in this... Slapstick crazy. ...random movie from 1986 called The House? The House. Or it's a house. Yeah. Not even the house. Yeah, it's called House. House. Right? Now, if you're not going to watch this movie, just give us tips based on what you've heard. Huh? And if you have any movie suggestions or... Yeah. Any other random 80s <laughs> horror movies that are obscure. Obscure. We will watch them. I'm pretty sure House is not that obscure, though. It's probably not. It's probably pretty popular. Yeah. But I would prefer to watch modern yeah. movies. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. So far. So far. We still need to see some, you know... Some of the good ones. Yeah, we've still got a bunch of staples in the month of October. Yeah. So remember to like and subscribe this YouTube channel and our video. And if you're listening on a platform like Amazon or Luminary or any of the other places that you get your podcasts, you can subscribe to that so that you get notifications. Remember that in the month of October, we're having one episode every single day. And we're going to have a couple of special episodes coming up where it's not a specific movie, but it's horror scenarios. Mm -hmm. Be vigilant, be brave, and be the last one standing. Always.